Images are a right pain to work with inside a tablet. Let's just be honest. Yes, you can drop them into a dashboard. Yes, you can use them as backgrounds. Yes, you can use them as shapes, but that's just also wrong. What I wanna show you today is a tool that actually handles images correctly and can work very nicely with Tableau. I'm gonna blow your mind with a tool called Cloudinary. Let's get stuck in. Now, just to set this up, I'm actually gonna be using a mock data set in Excel. I think Excel is actually a fair example here because not everyone has databases, not everyone uses Tableau that way. And I'm gonna show you a method that would work well in partnership with a database where the information is held. So here I have a file with 10 names and first names. And on another tab here, I have some URLs. Now these URLs are essentially image links to a service called Cloudinary, which I'll show you very, very soon. What I've done is I've then dropped this inside of Tableau. I'm not gonna go through that whole process. You know how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, check out tons of videos on YouTube. But I've essentially dropped into Tableau and I've gone into the data source and I've set up a data model. Now, lots of people would suggest joining. If you've never used the data model, if you just still join objects, by joining, I'm talking about doing this, opening up this connection and doing a left join on the ID field, which Tableau will actually figure out for you because it's smart enough that way. If this is what you're doing today and you've never tried the data model, just stop doing this. This is this is sort of, this is such an, an old way of doing things and honest to God, uh, you will honestly love the data model once you get familiar with it. So instead, create a relationship. It works exactly the same way and more often than not, Tableau will actually do the right thing for you and it takes a whole load of pain away. You can see that the relationships are set up down here on the bottom left and it works exactly as you'd expect. Now, the real power with the data model is that Tableau only brings the data together at the query level. So when you're actually looking at a sheet of information, Tableau evaluates the sheet and figures out what data it needs from the second data source and then process the relationship. With a join or with any other sort of way of using Tableau, whether it's blends, unions, Tableau has to do that ahead of time. So it's actually more computationally intensive. So Enough of a sidetrack on the data model. Here we are, we have uh, the images set up on the dashboard. Now, I've done another thing, which is I've broken down the URL into its subcomponent. Now, the reason I've done that is because when I went into Cloudinary and I got my URLs out, I did it manually. Yes, you wouldn't do this manually typically, but then I needed to recreate what you'd actually get out of the system if you're using something like an API. So that's what you see over here on the right-hand side. You essentially have the base URL, and what you can do is you can add a part of the URL in front of it. You can see this particular text is pretty much the same across all of the uh, links. So that's just added to the front of the URL and that makes the whole URL. So it's essentially two parts, the file URL and then the base URL for the service and that pretty much makes the whole URL. But this is where this service gets very interesting. Before I show you this amazing, I really do promise you this will blow your mind. Let's go to the next dashboard where I'll show you what I've set up. So here you can see I've set up a very simple dashboard. And what I've done is I've set up a dashboard action. Now, if you don't know how to do that, just go over here to the top, select actions, and it opens up this interface. Depending on your version of Tableau, this might look slightly different. If it looks like this, you're using a newer version of Tableau and it's gonna look exactly the same as mine. If you're using an older version, the options are the same. You just need to look for where they are. In essence, you need to add an action and essentially you need to add a go to URL action. In a recent version of Tableau, they changed this URL action so it could actually affect a web object. So you can see here that I've called this URL action image. It's from my dashboard, dashboard number one. It's from sheet number one. And when I click on any item in that particular sheet, it's essentially passing this web object to this particular box. So you can see this box is called res.cloudinary.com because it's actually been activated. But when I set this up, I just set this up to Google. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's just go hit cancel, cancel, and let's just reset this URL so you can see something more neutral. So let's just go ahead and delete that. And I'll just say HTTPS, uh, let's go to google.com. I'm looking around my mic if you're wondering what I'm doing. Hit okay, and you'll see it just loads up Google. When I go back to my dashboard action, select actions, uh, go into this uh, particular action and edit it, you'll see that it now says Google. So that web object just points to whatever URL is currently in that web object. And you'll see that what I have the option to do is to essentially pass it a URL from the sheet. And the way that's set up is actually through this insert option just over here on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and click that. You'll see you get three things, a URL, the link, and the name. It's essentially looking for the text fields inside of Tableau itself. So these are essentially coming from the data source that it can see in the view. Now, these are essentially this, name, link, and URL. These are the three fields that you can see here, and it's just passing that in there. So if I give it uh, the full link, 
that's essentially just going to give it the full URL for the image. And when I hit OK, and I hit OK again, now when I click on any particular line here, it's going to change this box to use that image. So let's go ahead and click that. And you can see, oh, there's a HTTP error that broke. Uh, let's go ahead and actually double check that action. I, I can swear I broke that uh, during uh, the setup. Let's just go double check that. And you can see HTTPS res.cloudmarine.com. Oh, that's why, because I set two links in there. I broke it uh, because I was doing the demo. So I'm, I'm sure I did something wrong there. Let's try again. There we go. Now the image is loaded. Now, the problem is, is these images are actually quite large. Let me show you where I've uploaded the images. If I switch tabs to this tab, you can see that I've got a nice square image. And you're probably wondering, hey, how is that square when the images we saw in the previous dashboard were all sorts of proportions? Well, what I've done is I've uploaded it to this service called Cloudinary. Now, Cloudinary is a cloud service. It's pretty much like a platform for images. Uh, just think of it as like an API for images. And this is my console. If I just go to the um, cloudinary.com website, let's just see their homepage so you can see what they're about. They're essentially about the unleashing the potential of your digital media. Essentially, you can upload things like images and video to their service, but then you can almost program how those images work just by changing parameters in a URL or in your API, or by the way you call the images. Essentially, they take the heavy work of processing the images for you so you don't have to ahead of time. So you can upload professionally taken images. They could be whatever size, and then this service will do things like transform them for you and change them on request and obviously cache them if it's done it once before, but it will do it on request. So you don't have to do all this heavy work ahead of time, especially when you've got large images, some of which may never get used. This service does it all for you. And so if I go to my console, you'll see that I've got a list of images. Now where this feature is so, so cool is if I click on any one of these images, uh, let's go ahead and go, let's just actually click on it. You'll see that we loads a preview of what the images look like, okay? And what this service can do is if you look at the bottom here, you've got something called transformations. Now, these transformations essentially allow you to change the image uh, on demand by just changing the URL. So what I want you to look at is this particular part of the URL when I click something else. So let's say I want this as a circle. I can just go ahead, click on a circle, and you'll see that it adds a parameter to the website just over here. It processes it, and once it processes it, it's cached. So next time I come to render this image, it'll be really, really fast. Let's go to a thumbnail instead. Let's go to this thumbnail over here. And again, you can see that it's been set to a width of 200. Now, because the image is really, really tall, uh, it, it's obviously going to be a tall image. It's probably four or 500 uh, pixels large, but I could set a height for that as well. If I wanted to, I can just go ahead and type that in and it will change that comfortably. And so what this allows us to do is inside of our dashboard, we can dynamically change the image just using a calculation. You could use a parameter. You could use device specific URLs, for example. Let's say on a mobile dashboard, you have a much, much smaller images. On another dashboard, you have much larger images. The only stipulation, the only challenge here is that you need to load it into a web object in today's version of Tableau. And in the future, when image roles come, you'll be able to build dynamic URLs that meet those image roles and change depending on where they're being used inside of the dashboard which is an absolute sort of brain teaser of a feature. So let's go ahead and show you how that could actually work. So at the moment, I have this uh, I have this container here that's set to 300 pixels by 300 pixels. What I wanna do is go ahead and change one of these images to match those proportions. You can see this one of the airplane doesn't match it at all. I can't even remember which one I click. Let's just click through these until we find that one with the plane. In fact, they all don't fit the proportions. There we go. That's um, I can't even pronounce this surname. This is from a mockery data set, and obviously it's gone and found names that I can't pronounce uh, standard. But let me just go and change the parameters of this. And I'm going to do this inside of Tableau. I'm not going to go to Cloud Marine and do it. I could do it there and show you, but I'll do it here inside of Tableau just by changing a calculation. So let's go back to sheet one where we have this. And uh, this is the actual uh, image that we, we're going to uh, be looking at. What I will do, though, is um, I'll keep everything else so we can see the sort of calculations working. And remember, this is my base URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type the calculation first so you can see this working in earnest. And then we can start doing some more clever stuff. In fact, I probably won't do the clever stuff. I'll just sort of explain how that works uh, using parameters or some other items. So I'm just going to cheat here and edit the alias. The reason I'm doing that is so I can get the actual text and I can copy it inside of a calculation. So let's go ahead and create a new calculation. And what we'll do is we'll call this uh, 300 pixels by 300 pixels, okay? So 300 uh, by 300. 
Okay. And uh, of course, the end of the URL has already been done for us. Uh, I've got that over here. So I already did a calculation ahead of time. The way I did that calculation for anyone who's uh, curious is I essentially staged it in three parts. Look at me. I even documented this ahead of time because I'm organized. That, that never happens. So <clears throat> what we have is a three-step calculation. Step one, find the position of the text upload because that is consistent across URLs. Step two, find the length of the entire text string and then subtract the number of characters that would comprise the word upload. Now, those who of you who are keen will know that upload is actually six characters, but the way the computer works actually starts at zero. So it will find six, but that will actually be five. So I'll need to minus five to essentially find the correct position uh, for the entire length of the um, text. Now, step three is we basically do some maths between those to find out the position from the right-hand side that I need to capture the URL. And that's what you can see here for the URL. Essentially, really super simple. Okay, so I've explained that. Now let's go ahead and create our own calculation. So right-click on that URL field, create calculated field. And we're just gonna um, make this larger so you can see it. I'm just hitting Command equals on a Mac, which is plus. And uh, what I'll do is I'll essentially grab the base URL, I'll just paste it in. It's a bit long and messy, um, but that's exactly what we need. And we're just gonna delete everything up until the forward slash here, okay? Because that's what we're gonna add later on. And uh, what we'll do is we'll add a speech marks around this to tell Tableau that this is actually a string and we'll go ahead and uh, finish that, okay? So there we go, we've added that. And now we're pretty much good to go. We could just leave it here and it would load the image. But what I actually need to do is add some parameters. So the thing I'm gonna add is I'm going to add another, oh, I added that in the wrong place. I'm going to add another plus because we essentially need to add a piece of text in between these two. And let's just go ahead and do that. So we've got somewhere to add some text in. And what I'm going to do here is add a um, specific parameter from Cloudinary. Now I'm going back to Cloudinary just to grab some parameters. You can see that I've actually done this already once here. I set this particular thumbnail to 400 by 400. So just to show you how this, this works really, really quickly, I can just set this top parameter here to three and set that to three and then hit enter and it will go ahead and resize that image. So what I need is just this small bit of text. Copy it, <clears throat> go back to Tableau, put this in. And I want to make sure I don't have any spaces because that will essentially break the URL. So what this text does is it will give each um, URL a 300 by 300 sized image instead of the one that we have in there by default, which will make it square. And then it will fit perfectly into a web object or whatever space that we have. So let's go ahead and hit, and hit apply. And now we have our 300 by 300 image. What I will do is I'll <clears throat> replace the link with that particular image so you can see that that's working. And let's just open up the link so you can see that, look, it now has that um, terminology all the way through all the URL. So now I've just dynamically changed the size of all the images just by changing the parameter using a calculation. So let's go ahead to my dashboard. And what I will now need to do is go ahead and change my action. So you'll actually get to see how I've set up this action in the first instance. Let's go ahead and hit edit. And what we want to do again is we go from uh, sheet one to the web object. It's already got something in there. And what I want to insert, instead of the link, I actually want to insert my 300 by 300 uh, URL. You can see it actually loads up an item there and I can hit okay and I can hit okay. So this is the moment of truth. <clears throat> we should get a perfectly square image in this box. Let's go ahead and hit that. Oh, and we had an error. I think I probably did the same thing as last time. Let's just go ahead and double check that. So, um, 300 by 300, uh, let's go ahead and click this and see if it actually loads something outside. It didn't load something outside, which means I probably did something wrong. Yes, I didn't include the text that says upload. That's a critical part of the component. So it's good to sort of troubleshoot these things. So <clears throat> what I will do is I will go and edit uh, the calculation itself. So in this 300 by 300, there's a critical part of the URL that I forgot to add that adds the upload folder, essentially where I've put the image. So what I need to do here is just type upload. The reason this is, is because I removed it when I was finding the position of the text, essentially. I used the term upload to find it and I removed it and I didn't put it back into the URL. So now that I've done that, we should be all gravy. You can see it's a little bit longer now. Let's go back to the dashboard. And now if we just go ahead and click that, we get a perfect square image and it loads and fills the space. 
So look at that. I haven't had to go to a design team and ask them to load me squares. I haven't had to go and do anything. It's all been done here in the image. Now, the great thing is that Cloudinary doesn't stop there. Cloudinary is just an incredibly useful tool. <clears throat> we can add lots of things. We can add text overlays on top of these. We can add watermarks onto these images. Let's say you're in an embedded solution. You want to add watermarks to images in a dashboard because for whatever reason, you want to let people know that these images are trademarked. You can do that all by just changing the URLs and it dynamically goes and adds that. Now, the way the service does that, if I just close this tab, I can go to something called transformations and you can actually see what it can do. You can resize images to fill specific dimensions. This is what we've been doing. We can apply a constant scale. We can even do face detection. So if you've got a, an image with people's faces, when it crops, it will actually go and center the crop on the face. That's just unreal. You can even do uh, data privacy capabilities. You can put an image over people's faces. So if you've got a photo and you want to make sure that some people uh, don't see certain faces, then you can, of course, go ahead and use this service to go and find those faces. And you can add other sort of interesting aspects of images. And it even works with video. You can add things like borders. It really is quite a robust capability. I can't think of many things that won't work with this. Now, the really great thing here is if you work in consumer goods, it's even got a background changing capability. So you can actually go and isolate the background, remove the background and leave you with the object. So if you've got a, an image of something that's been taken on a sort of very average background, this can really help you apply some consistency to the way that images are done. And you can apply effects and styles. It can really change up what you're trying to do. Um, almost to a ridiculous extent, I wouldn't go as far as some of these uh, sort of image suggestions work. I would probably just bake it into whatever service I'm using rather than trying to do all of this stuff in post. But here you are, you can just change the URL and change the way things work. And you're just defining it by adding a bunch of text parameters to the URL. So I just wanted to show that because when Tableau implement the image role, I think this will be a really, really powerful service. Now you're probably wondering, oh, what does it cost? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got me there. Let's go to my dashboard and I'll show you sort of um, my cost. Now, the only way I can think of do this uh, is actually just go to my account because I think that's the only place where I can actually see how many credits I've used and what the limits are. So here we go. I have a free plan with 25 monthly credits. One credit equals a thousand transformations. So in essence, I get 25,000 transformations and that credit also applies to storage and I've barely used the storage. So if we're just using a small company dashboard, in all honesty, people in uh, businesses don't actually <laughs> go to dashboards that often. We we all know that if we if we're server admins. Um, so you could actually get away with one use case: setting up a Cloudinary account, uploading your images, and if it's just a, a tactical deployment and you just want to test something really quickly, you could probably get away with just using the free limit. But actually, if you're in a large organization, you know thousands of people are going to use a dashboard. Maybe you're in an in an embedded solution. This is a really elegant way of scaling up the image capabilities in desktop without having to go and build a whole image service behind it. All you need to do is work with the Cloudinary API. It has an API and a platform behind it. Um, you can essentially create the assets ahead of time. So upload all the assets, uh, leave them in there. And when you're sort of done, you can do exactly what I did. You can just come and export a file with the URLs, essentially like I've done here, where we have the ID, the name, and the link. And then with those things, you can essentially modify them all in the dashboard just to keep things flexible. Those images are also usable in other places. So Cloudinary isn't just a Tableau specific thing here. Um, the way the API works, in fact, if you look at some of the examples that I was showing you earlier on, let's just go back a few steps. You can see they often show you uh, ways of doing the same thing using different languages. So URLs is what I like in Tableau because that's what I can edit, text. But if you're using other tools and technologies like Ruby, pretty much all of these uh, right the way through to app development. You can essentially have one consistent image library that works across a bunch of tools and Tableau can just slot into that setup. So I think Cloudinary is going to be an amazing tool for Tableau. Um, I really like to thank Andre, Andre, my uh, colleague and friend uh, who introduced me to this service. Now, nearly two, three years ago, initially I used to use this to run the images on my blog. Essentially, I'd upload the images here and I'd have the text statically hosted somewhere else. I think it was on, um, I forget the name of the service. Um, we can talk about that some other time. But in essence, I used to use this for hosting images on a blog. And actually, I realized this would be quite handy inside of Tableau when I came across a business challenge this week. And hopefully this video is showing you how you two can do that. I'd love to know the creative ways that people are sort of implementing this. So if you do find this video useful, let me know in the comments what you've used it for, if you're going to use it, if you found it useful, if you've got any tweaks or suggestions. I actually think Tableau should really think about 
images properly because we all want to bring a lot of design elements into our dashboards as authors, but actually it's an incredibly tough thing to do. At the moment, we've got very sort of narrow places where we can work with images. And I think for now, at least, and um, this image service will help you work with web objects. But in the future, when the image rolls will roll out, this service will become really, really handy for just making sure your dashboards always loads images that are nicely formatted and are consistent. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.